Okay, to get to <clears throat> the final reconciliation of BCAD, which is very ironic and very shocking, I first got to take you back to the basic structure of the time poems in the Bible, and there are many of them. Um, this is what I mean by Bible Hebrew meter. I'm going to show you from the English, because it'll be sort of easier to follow, how these time poems work. Because they're all interconnected, like if you laced your two hands together by your fingers. Um, all the, the Bible is laced together. And in particular, these time poems link to each other on purpose by means of meter. So that there is much more to be learned from them than you will see on the surface in the English especially. And for my example, and I've done this before in other videos, but I'm going to do it hopefully quickly here. We're going to look at Psalm 90 here. Okay? Now, before I even do that, what I have to tell you is something about drama, the history of drama. In ancient times, going all the way back as far as you want to go, drama came out of a sort of religious observance, a way of tradition passing on the stories of a people or of the gods. And there was always a storyteller who played the roles of all the characters in the story about the gods. And these stories were told orally, they were passed down from father to son, they were passed down from the leader of the tribe to the tribe, etc. Now the Bible actually has that same tradition, except of course it's the real God and it's the real people, okay, which eventually became a nation named Israel. So Moses here is actually following a drama tradition that everybody at the time he was writing knew. So what he's doing is he's playing storyteller and he's speaking rule speaking the words of each actor in a time play so his hebrew words are metered to match the years about which he's talking now if you don't know that you can just read these words and you know it's going to sound like Oh, this is a very nice philosophical statement, la di la. A lot of people like the text of the psalm and they quote it and talk about it. Okay, but if you just look at the English, you do not know why so many people treat that verse there as a millennial passage. The only way you know why it's treated as a millennial passage is because it is. But you only know that from the Hebrew. The millennium is not referenced in English except in two places. There, right in front of you, in blue, it's got a nickname called Day of the Lord that's used from this point forward based on this verse in blue. And then in Revelation where it says we'll reign with him for a thousand years. In English, that's the only way you can find a reference to it. The word millennium is not in the Bible. Okay? But, you know, people didn't have television in the old days. They played games with words. And we play games with words, too. For example, one of the most famous poems about Christmas is called Twas the Night Before Christmas. And if I suddenly said to you, my stockings were hung by the chimney with care, you'd know I changed the word the in the poem to my. And you'd know immediately I was talking about Christmas. I'm not mentioning the word Christmas. I'm not saying December 25. I'm quoting part of a poem that you and I both know and a custom that was, you know, popular in the West about hanging up stockings over your chimney where St. Nick was supposed to come down through the chimney at night, fill up the stockings, and then go back up through the chimney. You would know all that. I would know all that. But somebody just reading hung up, my, my stockings were hung by the chimney with care, and they don't know anything about the culture. They wouldn't know what that reference meant. 
It's the same thing here for the sentence in blue. And you're just reading the words in English. You have no idea what this reference means. You have to know the Hebrew. So now I'm going to show you what it means because it's going to be real important for getting back to the BCAD reconciliation. This whole part right here in Hebrew is 84 syllables. Moses is speaking as it were for God. Okay? He's playing an actor for God. He's also playing the actor for the witnesses, the believers in the future millennium. And what is their testimony then? He's looking way into the future and he's telling you what people will say the sort of, what do you want to call it, the anthem. And that's really a good description for what these time poems are. The anthem of a group at that segment of time. As if they were on stage already and you're watching them in a play. Because like I said, an ancient, very ancient drama, there was one guy speaking all the parts. Okay? So Moses is playing that role. What you see highlighted in blue now is an anthem of the people in the millennium. What their, as it were, viewpoint or philosophy is going to be. Okay? And this is 84 syllables. Isaiah is going to play on that and split it into two groups of 42 syllables to begin and end Isaiah 53. And I'm going to go through that too in English so you can see this but just know what you see highlighted in blue is 84 syllables in Hebrew it's supposed to be 70 syllables because the 70 year period Moses is accounting sabbatically with the meter the 70 year period is in the middle the total time unit is 1050 it's parsed as 490 plus 70 plus 490 so Moses is taking each 70 which is a mass voting mass testimony period and he's talking as if he were in that period as the actor the representative actor believer for that period okay so this is the millennial testimony that's why it ends with the millennium it's clever it's like our little poem twas the night before Christmas and instead of Moses saying my stockings were hung by the chimney with care He's saying, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday. You can see why that would be relevant to the people testifying during the millennium. It'll be the first time in history that people live that long since Adam. That was the life, you know, the life expectancy of Adam. That's going to be the life expectancy in the millennium. And one of the things that those people are going to need to remember is that a thousand years really isn't a very long time. They know it's a thousand years and then the end comes. They're going to know the time limit. And it's not really a thousand, it's 1050, but the last 50 years are a mass voting period for unbelievers. And so that doesn't have to be mentioned. That's axiomatic. All right, it's the thousand years that's highlighted. Okay, this is 84 syllables from here to here in Hebrew, not 70 because there's a shortage at the end, and I'll get to that. There's a 14-year shortage that Moses is forecasting, and that's going to be real important when we get back to the timeline on the BCAD reconciliation. Just take it for granted right now. This is 84 syllables. It's meant to be 14 years over. It's basically saying the 14 years are hidden in Christ. Okay, now we come back to history proper. This particular part right here is Adam, the Adam Adamic generation, pre-flood generation testimony. And you know that, first of all, because of the way he's metering it. But if you didn't know the meter, the keywords are like flood, they fall asleep, okay? Because even a thousand years, that was the life expectancy in Adam's day, that even a thousand years don't mean anything. Okay? And it's the morning. It's the morning. It's the dawn of history. 
Adam's fall was the dawn of history. Okay, and this is the Adamic period testimony. Different actor now. A new actor is on the stage, Moses talking his lines. This is the anthem for the Adamic period from the time of Adam's fall until the flood. And it's keynoted here by the word flood even. Okay, it's also keynoted because the word here placed, that's Seth. Meaning, you know, Adam's son who carries the name. So Adam's son who carries the name, he's appointed, placed to carry the name. So see, again, because this is so well known, they're using wordplay. It's like, I hung the, sto the stockings by the chimney with care. I don't need to say it's Christmas. You know immediately what I'm talking about. So if he uses the keyword Seth, okay, and the word flood, all right, then that's real clear. And the difference between the guy who announced the flood, Enoch, and Seth, placed, is 490 years. So it's very clever wording. Okay, morning of history. Okay. And then the evening of history, of course, is going to be the flood. See, swept away like a flood. That's in parallelism with evening. Even in the text, you can tell that. All right, in the morning they grow. In the evening they fade. Okay, well, that fading is compared right here with being swept away like a flood. You could know that even if you didn't know the meter or what he was talking about. It's a parallelism. All right, so this is all the Adamic period. This is 70 syllables long in Hebrew. So that closes off the Adamic period. The next period is the Noahic period. And it runs through here. And that also is 70 syllables long. This is the, the people who come from Noah. This is their testimony during their own 1050, which began, of course, with Noah as we're going to see when we get back to the timeline. Bible measures a 1050 from Noah. All right, so this is their 1050. So you have the, t the final 1050 of the millennium here. Whoops, I'm sorry. You have the final 1050 of the millennium here. You have the first 1050 of, of history right here. You have the second 1050 beginning with Noah here. And this is the testimony of the Noahic people. All our days have declined in your fury. Yeah, they're post-flood. You see how clever that is? Declined, yeah, the life expectancy went down as a result of the flood. And it went down to 70 years by the, you know, by the time the 1050 was over. Okay, 80 years. All right. The people, the first generation out of the flood lived a lot longer, but if you look at the begats, you'll notice that after the flood, starting in Genesis 11, the, the life expectancy goes way down. Okay, so that's why this is so, so apt. Our days have declined in your fury. Yeah, the fury of the flood. We finish our years with a sigh. Okay, and I covered all this in my Psalm 90 videos in detail. You know, including the retranslation, the meter, the whole bit. But I'm just trying to give you the overview now. So this is the Noahic testimony, a third actor on the stage, Moses saying his lines. What is the testimony of the Noahic people? Okay. And it's 1050 years from Noah to Jacob. Okay, we went over that in the earlier, you know, 12, 12 A and B. It's 1050 years from Noah to Jacob. So this is the Noahic people prior to Jacob, what they say. Okay? And then we come to Moses because he's the output. This is Moses' own autobiographical testimony. He's actually voting during the voting period of the third 1050. Okay? David rises at the end of the 1050. All right. This is Moses' own testimony of his own vote during the voting period as a result of which the exodus occurred. This is what Moses was saying to God. 
teach us to number our days okay and what God is answering is this mirroring thing make us glad according to the days you afflicted us and the years we have seen evil in other words if you have afflicted us 400 years then give us 400 years of prosperity and that's real important to know God is answering this 400 years after the slavery is answered by 400 years David is born the 400 years of the slavery are, are a composite 390 years proper Israel was in the land from she was in the land for 40 years she you know Jacob and them come into the land 1870 BC the first 40 years everything was nice because Joseph was still in power then um, Aminem had the second, uh, third, the third. Aminem had the third comes to power, and um, that's after Joseph retires, and he manages to do a sort of eminent domain encroachment on the land of Goshen, turning them into granary cities, and that's how come Israel became temple building slaves. Okay, that was 390 years. So they have a total of 430 years, Exodus 12, 40, and 41. All right, but there are 10 extra years. That's why God said 400 to Abraham in Genesis 15. The, four, the extra 10 years are for Joseph's own enslavement because he was enslaved 10 years before he became vizier. So it is a total of 400 years, but they're not contiguous. But it is a total of 400 years, so 400 years they were in total enslaved, 430 years they were in total in Egypt, the last 390 they were enslaved. They come out 430 years to the day from the time Jacob entered Egypt at age 130. All right. And then 400 years after the Exodus, David is born. He becomes king 430 years after the Exodus. So God is answering Moses' own prayer in the highlighted blue you see there. I call it mirroring. That for the exact amount of time that one thing happens, there is a mirror, a credit, offset. In other words, you've got a certain amount of time spent on one side of the ledger and then on the other side of the ledger. Like when Joseph became vizier and he had the, the Pharaoh had those dreams of the seven fat and seven lean years, that's really two 40-year periods back to back with the two seven-year periods being in the middle. And Jacob enters the land during the, the middle of the lean years in the second 40. Okay? You have to do your math in the Bible to understand this. It's very sophisticated. And unfortunately, the scholars haven't done it. So that's why we think our Bible timeline is, you know, that the Bible dates don't reconcile. They reconcile all right, but God's using different time tracks, and we're not paying enough attention to how he's using them. This is how he's using them. This is his rule for time right here. He balances time like a checkbook. And Moses asked him to do that. Now Moses is asking him to do something that Moses knows God already does as a rule. But he's asking God to teach us, teach the people how he does that. Because the people, you know, had lost it. They had gotten apostate. All right. So that's the Mosaic testimony during the third 1050, Moses' own testimony. Moses is now speaking as the actor for himself. Then the last 1050, which is the one during which Christ will die, is right here. And it's all, this is 56 syllables instead of 70. See, this was also 70 syllables here. This is 56 syllables. And it's the oh, here. Let me pull this down a little. This is 56 syllables, and that's the time that ends with the time of Purim. All right, that's the voting period that that Purim ends just before the new voting period, the new 70. And this is only 56 syllables. The other 14 
are reserved up here. Okay. The other 14 are reserved up here because the temple was going to be in trouble. Israel was going to be in trouble. There would have to be some rebuilding. So that's cleverly denoted by the work of our hands. See, he keeps saying it. Work of our hands. Let your work appear to your servants. Yeah, because this is about the rebuilding of Jerusalem. Okay, and Purim was a threat to that never occurring. You know, the temple got rebuilt in 516 in Jerusalem with it, but it ended up getting in trouble again by the time of Purim. There was a threat called the Haman Conspiracy that would have wiped out Jerusalem beginning on 13th through 15th of Adar, which was patterned after the Jewish Passover. They were casting lots. That's what the word Purim means. They cast lots to determine the best time to kill the Jews in their pagan culture. That was what Haman sponsored and had um, Esther's husband sign off on. And then Esther went before her husband to warn him about what this really was. And that's, you know, Israel got saved and Haman got put on the gallows. You know, that's what Purim represents. Moses is predicting that as the final voting period before Christ comes. Okay, so when you take it all together, when you take it all together, this is 350 syllables equals 350 years. And it's standing for the 5,250 5, years of history that were scheduled. 4,200 meaning 2,100 for the Goyim, 2,100 for the Jews. The Jews call that 2,000 and 2,000 today, but it's really 1050 each times 2. And then Messiah was supposed to come back and the millennium was supposed to start. 4,200 from Adam's fall. And then there were another 1050 years which would take you to 5250 and the eternity was supposed to begin. That's all encapsulated in this time poem here. All right? So, yeah, you can read it in English and you'll get the words on the surface and it'll be a sort of gee whiz, oh, isn't that nice? And you'll miss the entire import of what he's really saying because you don't know the Hebrew. And since scholars have been debating whether Hebrew even has meter for 300 years, Christians don't know about this. And the Jews know about the fact that it's 2100, but they call it 2000, plus 2100, then Messiah comes back. They know that, but nobody listens to the Jews because Christianity is anti-Semitic. Okay, I'm sorry, that's the problem. That's why we don't know about this Hebrew meter. The people who have been debating and working on Hebrew meter are largely um, preterists, and preterism is anti-Semitic. So of course they're not going to notice the meter because the meter tells you that, uh, excuse me, pre-trib rapture is biblical because it's based on the time owed to Israel, which is now vested in Christ. So it's owed to Christ. And Israel, therefore, cannot lose it because Christ is king of the Jews. We don't wear that hat. We don't share in that covenant. We have our own covenant based on Psalm 110. That's the theme of the book of Hebrews. But just understand that this is Jews know that this is about the millennium. The Jews know that. They know that this is about the millennium, the thousand years that Israel will be queen of the nation. You probably talk to almost any Jew and they'll tell you that. They probably don't know or don't remember that this is metered in 350 syllables. Or if they know that it's metered in 350 syllables, they make the mistake of counting it as seven jubilees and therefore think there's 7,000 years to history. But it's 570s, not 750s. That's a place where the Jews make an accounting error with respect to this psalm. Okay, the other thing, and I've got to say it and then I'll be done, this 350 syllables equals years time poem also is a forecast of how the book of Judges will play, the time of the Judges. It's also a wry commentary, syllable by year, on the time of the Judges, how it will end. 
And this is how it ends in the book of Judges. And when the book of Judges, you know how it sort of segments time off, so many years under Othniel, so many years under Deborah. It's tying back to segments of this time poem here that reference the rye text referencing every year under the terms of the judges. It's time back to that. But you'd have to know the meter in Psalm 90, and I did a bunch of videos on it, so you can go look it up. And then also in that playlist, the Psalm 90 playlist, I show the, the map with the book of Judges and how it's tying back to Psalm 90 to show how Psalm 90's words got fulfilled in the time slots that it used inside the book of Judges. That's why the book of Judges is there, is to show that Psalm 90 was fulfilled. Okay? But just as a quick recap, what you need to know is beneath the text and the meter interact, these are actors. These are the actors for the millennium, talking. And the meter tells you the time period. That's why you have to know it, and you can only know that from the Hebrew. That's how come you know that this is a millennial actor for the future millennium with the 14 years owing to Christ already housed inside again this is the Adamic generation as it were prior to the flood their 1050 the first 1050 of history and their testimony second actor on the stage Moses saying his lines this is the third actor in the Noahic 1050 okay their testimony okay this is 84 syllables. This is 70 syllables to stand for the 1050, which is in the middle. The 70 is voting period in the middle. Mass voting, so it's the mass actor talking. Okay, mass actor talking here again, also 70 syllables, the Noahic generation actor for that 1050. Then this is Moses himself for the third 1050 talking. And then I stressed how. Yeah, God mirrors the time. We're going to see a lot of that mirroring coming up after I get back to Ephesians 1 reparsed. So this is Moses' testimony during the third 1050, and God, of course, answering it. And then this is the final 1050 during which Christ comes with focus on the voting, on the Purim threat to the voting period even occurring in that last 1050. That's the hands of rebuilding. Okay, confirm to us to the work of our hands is for rebuilding Jerusalem, and then the fact that the Lord will have hands. Isaiah is going to play on this in Isaiah 53:10, uh, where he says, you know, the, the, it, the work shall, he shall prosper in his hands. Okay, that's uh, the the last part of Isaiah 53:10, and then also in Isaiah 53:1. Um, um, where it says to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed that's all a play on this particular passage still futured even when Isaiah is writing but it's a play on it because it's when Messiah is going to have hands see again if I said to you my stockings were hung by the chimney with care I'm not saying anything about Christmas or December 25th or Christ or the fact that there's a holiday or anything. I'm talking about stockings in a chimney. If you don't know the cultural meaning of that reference, you don't get the wordplay. Same thing here. Same thing with, with verse 16 and, verses 16 and 17. It's 56 syllables, not 70, because the extra 70 is housed in Christ up here. He's got to come first before that 14 is going to play. And that's a running metrical theme throughout the Bible. And Paul's Ephesians 1, 3 through 14 carries forward that theme. So hopefully you understand a little more about it. And we're going to now get to the Isaiah play on it in the next increment.